Hey, I'm Creech and this is Creech and Cars. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all new upcoming Polestar 5, an all electric super sedan set to take on the likes of the Porsche Taycan, Tesla Model S, and Lucid Air. A quick overview of Polestar for those who are unfamiliar. Polestar started out as a racing brand and a performance wing of Volvo back in the mid 90s, but after Gili bought Volvo, Polestar was eventually propped up as a standalone brand that was fully electric, although it would still rely heavily on Volvo's existing infrastructure. The current lineup consists of a few compact hatchbacks and SUVs, but now Polestar is working on the 5, which will be a higher-end offering that features better styling and performance. So today, we'll take a look at the design and styling as well as the features and performance, and then I'll go over the pricing and release details before giving my final thoughts on the Polestar 5. Let's start with the exterior design, which hasn't been officially revealed just yet. The Polestar 5 has been spied out for testing, and you can still see some key design cues through the camouflage. Overall, the body is sleek and angular. It might be too simplistic for some, but it's definitely not over-designed. The LED running light design is a major aspect of the car, and as with other brands, the lights act essentially as a secondary logo. In the case of Polestar, the lights mirror the sections of the star-shaped logo. The small lower grille has a trapezoidal shape to it that I think looks nice and sporty. The door handles sit mostly flush against the doors, and the 5 has that four-door coupe silhouette with the sloping roof line and the high rear hip. The spy shots show pretty basic wheels fitted for the testing run, but the renderings have well-proportioned duotone four spokes. The rear end design hints towards this model having a hatchback as opposed to a more traditional trunk opening. More noticeably, the Polestar 5 doesn't have a rear window. As with the Polestar 4, which has been approved by US regulators, the 5 makes use of an extensive camera system to replace the need to look out of the back window, at least in theory. Below that is the light bar that dominates the taillight design, and I would say the taillights are probably the most Volvo-esque design cue found on the 5. While there isn't an exhaust, of course, I do think the designers did a good job of adding a little flair with this rear bumper design. Overall, I don't think it's a bad looking car. It definitely has a Chinese look to it, and I think the design works without having a rear window, but we'll just have to wait and see if buyers are actually ready for that. Moving inside, Polestar has shown a conceptual interior for the 5, and I think this fairly accurately represents what the production interior will look like, because Polestar does use this ultra-minimalist design language with its interiors. Overall, it's a very boring interior, and there just isn't much going on. There's a small screen for the gauge cluster, and then a massive tablet-style screen that serves as the main infotainment screen. There aren't many physical controls, but there are fairly traditional wiper stalks and a physical dial control in the center console that is possibly the gear selector. I do like the steering wheel design and the seat design. Both of these elements look very sporty and higher end, especially the seats. Polestar's signature yellow seat belts accent the white interior well. The rear seats have two bucket seats with a matching center console, complete with that same center dial that you could see up front. This is one area, however, where I think the production interior may just have a more traditional rear bench, and it will stray some from this concept interior. Whether or not you like the minimalist design, interior space and comfort should be pretty good as the 5 will be the largest car that Polestar has made. It will also be the fastest and most powerful Polestar by the time it rolls off of the assembly line. This is made possible by the 800 volt architecture that the model will be built around. The standard model will have one motor, but there will be an optional two motor configuration with the door open for a tri-motor high performance setup. 
although nothing like that has been announced just yet. For that two motor setup, which is what we'll focus on right now, one motor will be mounted on each axle, providing all wheel drive. The five will use Polestar's P10 motors, which while being specific to Polestar, a lot of this technology is borrowed from Geely. The two motors should combine to produce about 880 horsepower and 660 pound-feet of torque. Those are healthy numbers. For reference, the Taycan Turbo S has 750 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. Polestar is aiming for a 0-60 to 60 time of about 3 seconds. The Polestar 5 will have a 2-speed transmission and make use of a 103 kilowatt hour battery which is projected to provide about 370 miles of range per charge. That is much better than the Taycan, but pretty much everything is, as that number for the 5 still lags behind the Lucid Air and Tesla Model S. Pricing is mostly unknown, but don't expect the price to be below $90,000 for the base model, with that number climbing to well over $100,000 with options. Development is very much underway, as we can see Pulsar already testing the model out on public roads. Deliveries could start sometime in 2025, with the first ones even being 2025 model years, but don't be surprised if we don't see the 5 out on the roads for another year or so, with the model launching as a 2026 model year. With all of that information in mind, here are my final thoughts on the Polestar 5. Polestar is in a unique position as it's essentially the only Chinese EV manufacturer that has been able to sell cars in the North American market because of how it's been able to use Volvo's existing physical and legal infrastructure. That's a good spot to be in relative to other Chinese companies, but the Polestar 5 will still face very steep competition from American and German companies who are all competing for a small segment of the car market. Demand for models like the Taycan or Model S has been volatile. So I see the 5 as being mostly a flagship model in Polestar's lineup, and it can accomplish this without selling particularly well or really making a ton of money for Polestar. So that's everything we know right now about the all new 2026 Polestar 5, a high performance four door GT car set to take on the Taycan, Air, Model S, and e-tron GT. Let me know what you think about the Polestar 5 in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future uploads. On this channel, I talk about car news like this, as well as history and culture. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.